What an absolute uh, treat and a pleasure and a privilege this is. Joining me in the studio is Dave Light, who has got a title shot uh, at the uh, WBO Cruiserweight. And um, and he's going to let us know exactly when that's going to be and everything. First, welcome in, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah, it's good to be here. You've just yeah. come back from Florida. Yep. Yeah. And that was after um, beating Brandon Glanton and you won by a split decision. Mm. So, you know... Just talk us through that. I mean, you look as though you haven't been in a fight. You look as though yeah. you're pretty unscathed after well, that. Well, I feel it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was a split decision. He got a knockdown in the last round, um, which really, because he won one on one of the judges' cards 5-4, but he completely missed with the punch, and the, it, was, it was a slip. Um, so it should have been a majority decision, I think, but it ended up being a split. Did you feel but, like you, uh, you, uh, you uh, controlled the fight? Yeah, you know, it was a close fight. It was a really good fight. Um, we were both throwing a lot of punches, um, but I think I did what I needed to do. We identified that he was a bit of a bully, liked to get people moving back and drowning them out, so I knew I had to stand there with him and punch with him, and that's what I did, and it worked out. Okay, so 10 rounds, that's a hell of a long time, mate, to be mm. in the ring as well. So were you you obviously um, trained and actually, and, actually, and actually prepared for to be able to go that distance? Yep. Yeah, I, <laughs> you should have seen my training, man. I just... Got a couple of big Samoan fellas, and they just do one round in, run round out, wow. and um, in a small ring, and down Dominion Road, City League are, and yeah, they just just told them come in and push me around and don't let me breathe at all for ten rounds. So um, that, if I hadn't had that, I wouldn't have made it through the fight. That's yeah. hardcore yeah. training, man. Yeah, that was. That I was. mean, I, look, I, you know, I used to go down and watch Izzy fight at um, at um, at um, uh, City uh, Kickboxing. Yeah. And just be amazed at just one after the other coming at him, one after the other yeah, coming yeah, at him. Yeah. And that gives you no time to catch your breath, does it? No. Nah, and the nah, guy that's coming nah. in is keen as hell to go, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was brutal, man. Yeah, this was a real brutal camp, but we knew that that's what we needed to do. Because um, this guy, Brandon Glanton, likes to stick to you like mud. So, um, But it worked out. So, uh, you know, it was, I was feeling, you know, getting into the fifth, sixth, seventh round, those mid-rounds, I was knew that I'd been there before, so I could stick through it. Okay, so as much a much of a mental thing as well as anything else. Oh it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like ninety percent mental. Okay, because <laughs> yeah. you must hit the wall while you're doing this. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was times. I mean, I was doing it twice a week with these guys. It's like running a marathon, you know. And it's just like you're getting worn out. And but um, but yeah, it it worked out. So <laughs> so <laughs> during fight. those periods, and especially during a fight when you're feeling like that, what are you? What do you go to? Is there a word that you use? Do your trainers use a word? I mean, you know you've done the training, but you've got to actually kind of convince yourself again, don't you? Yeah, I mean, like the whole thing, my whole thing is to just not look at it, look at it as 10 rounds. You know, it's, it's sort of too big a mountain to climb. It's just one round at a time. Right. I got to that point where I was like, all right, I'm just going to do really well the next round. And then when I came back, I was like, okay, I feel like I'm good enough to do another round. You know, so it was... um. And then by, by before I knew it, I had two rounds to go and I'm still feeling all right. So, yeah. David Light is in the studio with us. Um, so tell us about yourself. Where did you grow up? I grew up on the North Shore of uh, Auckland. Um, youngest of eight kids. Um, yeah. Belmont. Um, my brother, he started boxing. It was something I, I didn't even know that it was something I could do, boxing. You know, it was, it was something that I saw on TV and I thought it was like an American thing. Right. Um, and then one day my brother had a fight and he brought the video home. And I just, I remember thinking like, that's freaking incredible that you could have the balls to get in there and try and do something so hard with a whole bunch of people watching you. You know, it was not like soccer or rugby or anything else where you could kind of hide amongst the team and, you know, it was just all eyes on you, and it was, and um, just like yeah, just being blown away by the courage it took to do that. Look, I, I look at it, and I just think that at times it must be the loneliest thing there is when you're walking into that mm. ring. You know, it's a, you're nude, man. There's no one with you. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, no one with you in there, right? And as you say, you know, there's so many people watching, and 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 buying for blood as well. Because mm. I mean, the you know the fight crowd wants it, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so and you must learn a hell of a lot about yourself. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um 
you do learn a lot about yourself. Like my my heroes growing up were like Tyson and Tua. They were like the guys that got me into it. Like, man, yeah. And I haven't got a lift hook to save myself. Like, <laughs> you know, so I'm just not at all like those guys. I had to learn my own style. You know, I wanted to be like them, but I was never going to be like them. You so. seem too nice. Not, he seems too nice to be. He seems too nice to be a fighter, man. I mean, look, the thing I used to love about Tyson was uh, more than anything, I love the chains rattling. I love yeah. the fact he came in in that black towel with nothing else. And he just looked as though he wanted to kill the guy. And I remember that fight, I don't know how old you were, with Michael Spinks, where you could see the fear in the, in the dude's eyes. Yeah. I mean, this guy wants to kill me, you know? Yeah. And so, I mean, how do, you, how do you get into that fight mode? Uh, you know, where you, where you, I mean, you've got an opponent, you've got to try and knock the guy out. Um, you definitely have to <clears throat> work your way up to it. You know, you have to, there's a whole process to get your mentality up to that point where you're doing that. Um, but a lot of it is telling yourself, you know, that you're doing weeks and weeks and weeks of grueling training. You know, you're not going to let the fact that you're just a nice person get in the way of sure. doing what you need to do. Yeah. Um, so that's a big part of it. <laughs> so it's not about aggression. It's about controlling your emotions more than anything, isn't definitely, it? Definitely. Definitely. I think that's that's the number one thing. That's how you get it. That's how you do it. If you can't do that, you, you can't do it. And that was something Tyson was actually incredible at, was controlling his emotions when it came to fight time. And um, yeah, he he just turned business, didn't he? He knew exactly yeah, yeah, what he was there oh, for. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and also um, David. I mean, look, and I'm so glad you mentioned him. I mean, he's mm. been a real hero of mine. And mm. out of all the sports people in New Zealand that I've met, um, Izzy and him are the only ones that uh, you could be walking down the street with him. People come running from the other side of the street. They do to <laughs> yeah. say hello. You know, yeah. this is what being the heavyweight champ does, man. This is what yeah. being the champ does. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you take him to a school. Kids love it, eh? They absolutely love yeah, it. Yeah, I was so disappointed that Tyson couldn't get in the country. You know, I mean. It's, he means so much to so many people, and that would have been awesome if he if he came. You know, I was uh, I know, about a decade ago that he tried to get in, but yeah, because yeah. of the conviction. So, how long have yeah. you been boxing then? I've been boxing about sixteen years. Yeah, yeah. and was it always a, an ambition to turn pro? No, no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, I never thought I was going to be pro. Uh, when I was an amateur, I was, amateur boxing was everything to me because um, I thought skill wise that were, that was where where it was at it was at in the amateur boxing you know mm -hmm. we we fought all around the world i fought like russians and and all sorts of you know some of the best countries and you know some of the best boxers in the world never go pro they all stay amateur um the cubans for example well i tell you what he, who was it that he won three gold medals didn't he stevenson wasn't it yeah stevenson yeah, yeah, yeah. he won yeah. three golds and they were going to try and fight him and ali at one stage yeah 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 so yeah. so how many so how many um amateur fights i had about 75 bloody hell that. yeah that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> How many fights do you have in you as a boxer? I mean, I'm just thinking about oh, just man. your headspace and the knocks you're taking. Well, you know, in amateur boxing, it's the three rounds, three three-minute rounds, and it's quite just a high pace, you know, sort of like a 100-meter sprint compared to like a marathon, so you have like 12-round fight. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of a different kind of thing, a um, bit of a different sport, really. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you can definitely do more of them because then you only have to win two rounds out of the three. Right. Um. So you, you just have to be good for six minutes in an amateur fight, and you've and you've got the fight. So have you yeah. boxed at the Commonwealth Games and things? And the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the silver there. In yeah. the in the um, Olympics, for sure, stupid mm. me, I should have known that. And what about the Olympics? Mm. Olympics, honey, I didn't make the Olympics. No. Yeah. But how did you get this fight against Brandon? Um, well, I'd worked myself. I went to Florida uh, in May, and I got a first round knockout. Um, and just just working up my career, you know, I'm, I'm 20 and 0 now. I was 19 and 0, and so I was re rated number six in the WBO. Um, he was rated number uh, 10 or 11, and then they bumped him up to seven so that we could do a title eliminator yep. um, fight. So yeah, they really wanted the fight, and but they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They definitely wouldn't come here or go Aussie or go in here neutral. They wanted me back in his state. His, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. So. Um, you know, being from New Zealand, you don't get a lot of options, so you just got to take what you can get. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, but, you know, you back yourself and, you know, you can beat anyone anyway. And, look, the, the fantastic thing about what TVNZ had done um, by getting the boxing is this is just ra this has raised the profile and the mm. the uh, publicity because you're getting hundreds of thousands of people watching straight away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So yeah. I put you in a position. So now Lawrence O'Coley. Mm. So, and he's with Eddie Hearn. We know that name. Yeah, because I mean, obviously, with Joseph and everything, that the amount of promotion. That he, so, so what do we know about this dude? Oh man, he's a he's a bit of a monster, he's a bit of a freak. He's like six six. Um, Bloody hell! Yeah, and he can bang a bit. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's like the opposite fight to the fight I just had. Yeah, because uh, he was a you know short stout guy that I just fought and. 
tried to come at me, but this guy keeps his range and throws well, bombs Well, he can. Long. Yeah, yeah. He can because he's got height and he's got reach. Yeah. So, but he must be kind of lean. He must be because... Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but you're going to have to get inside. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And when does this fight take place? Um, hopefully at the end of March, but I mean, we're still in the negotiations, but at the end of March or early April. And where's it going to be? Uh, probably in England, but yeah, I'd say most likely in England. So yeah. that means going to relocate over there? Um, no, I don't really mind. Yeah, I, I do city, pretty much what the city kickboxing guys do. You know, they, they go over a week before, um, you know, uh, that's what I did the last two times I've been to Florida. I just went over a week before right. and, uh, just cause. I don't like being away from my team and, you know, everything that we're doing is working. So yeah. trying to like change everything up. So tell us about this gym and Dom Road. Mm. So is this a gym that other, that a boxing gym that just, uh, you know, your average person that goes along and just does the training and stuff like that as well? Oh, that's just where I've been sparring. Oh, okay. um, I train out of uh, Peach Boxing out West Auckland, okay. Anderson Valley. Yeah. yeah. At my coach's house actually built, it's been about a hundred and, 50 grand or something building a big gym out in his backyard and oh, yeah. brilliant. i don't know how his missus like allowed it but you know he's just and he doesn't charge us anything wow hardly. so he's uh so yeah. what's his motivation he just loves boxing <laughs> and he loves the idea of getting you a title shot <laughs> yeah yeah he loves the idea of creating you know champions champions yeah yeah, yeah. so what's his name uh, isaac peach isaac mm. peach absolutely yeah. okay brilliant so yeah. so this here what does it mean in terms of how life changing could it potentially be for you to to win a WBO title? I mean, that's like you know, it's it's sixteen years of doing a sport where you get beat up a lot, you know. <laughs> like you, you get so many low times where you're thinking, "What the hell am I doing doing this sport? It makes no sense. It's stupid. It's too risky, and all that stuff." Um, so to get you know the highest uh, achievement possible yeah. in it. That's just sort of makes it, you know, 16 years of work worth it. Cause you know, you know, so many people have been banged up by boxing and had sure. to forced into retirement and stuff. And you know, they got a bit of a chip on their shoulder kind of thing about the whole thing. Mm. Like, so it's, um, to come out with something that you can say you made it all worth it. It's, it's pretty huge. Look, a title yeah. of champion of the world is, Pretty lofty power, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't know if it needs much explaining. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. I mean, this is, this, is what I love, this is what I love about it. Of yeah. the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the world. Um, you know, and and is it is it riches after that? Is it does it is it, is it going to pay you? Um, yeah, hopefully it would be nice to get a um, pay out of it. But, you know, there's still a, it's, it's not really about that for me. Yeah. Um, I come from a pretty, you know, like, all right, well-off family kind of thing. Um, my dad invented the Easy-O Yogurt Maker, so he did that. Uh... He what? <laughs> he what? <laughs> Everyone knows what that is, man. Yeah. Everyone, he invented it. Everyone's got one. He's got one. In the closet from 15 years ago. That's it. Well. I mean, it's one of those things you take to cash converters after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The old bullet thing. The dude, yeah, yeah. He invented that. He invented it. Yeah. Not until he just retired off that, did he? Uh, he did well off it. Yeah, he yeah. did really well off it. Um, well, there's your eight kids, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, you know. So, you know, I was, um, you know, we were pretty well off. And he's, he's he's always done really well in business and that kind of thing. My mom was really business-minded and savvy and all that stuff. So, What do they think about you doing this as a job, mate? <laughs> My dad once offered me 200 grand to quit. <laughs> and you're, 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 it's a reasonable salary, isn't it? Just he said, how much can you possibly make doing this? And I was like, ah, you know, in the cruise rate division, maybe like 250 grand or something. He's like, I'll give you that to you. So stop <laughs> Just doing like, this. what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, well, I still got to do something with my life, you know? Yeah. And look, and, you know, and ultimately, as you say, I mean, it's quite obvious. I mean, that belt, that title, you know, I mean, yeah. that's just, you know, oof, I mean, it's, it's not just a dream. It's also just, um, I can feel it's kind of like, at the end of the accomplishment so just like it'll be something that you'd probably be able to press pause at that stage sit back and go wow look at what i've just done yeah i mean um i'm not really doing it for the bragging rights um i don't really give a shit <laughs> what anyone thinks of it or anything i uh, you need to be doing something with your life and um it's been awesome just working with you know i'm working alongside this russian boy um andre mikhailovich and Working inside uh, Jerome Pampelon, I think they're both future world champions. You know, I'm I'm a big part of where they're going, what they're doing, sure. the camaraderie of our gym. You know, the community of it. Yeah. Um, my friendship with Isaac and everything. It's just like 
it gives so much meaning to my life that so many people don't have. Um, that's what it's about for me. And it's just winning is just a way to keep it going. <laughs> well, you know, we thank you so much for coming yeah. in and joining us, mate. All the very best. And uh, yeah. so around about March, maybe next year, is it? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. And when and when is that all going to be put in place? Do we know? Oh, uh, you know, they're working on it right now. They're in negotiations, that kind of thing. So um, we should know by, by the end of the week, if not maybe the end of the day. <laughs> right. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, look, all the best again. Thanks so much for coming in. And we're going to follow your progress, uh, obviously, closely, so mate. Yeah, now it's been awesome brilliant here. day. Thank you. <laughs> Team Light. <laughs> Team light here, pal. <laughs> Thanks so much, David. Thanks, Ed. Brilliant, man. Cheers.